Today I'd like to uh, introduce you all to, uh, this, is, this is when, when the applause comes in, I'll have to do this. <laughs> uh, I have to, I'd like to introduce you to uh, how to use the mouse. The mouse is a, mouse is a critical part of communicating with the, with the machine. And uh, so what we have is we have methods for listening, but having the computer listen to the mouse, what it's doing, and it can tell you where it is, where it's located, whether it's clicking down or clicking up or whatever it's doing. So I'd like to show you those commands, and what they do is they'll allow you to keep monitoring the mouse, and when the user does something to it, you'll know what they've done, and you'll be able to respond in your program. You can do whatever you want to do, okay? To begin with, like, if you get the screen, and, uh, and you have your mouse, uh, the first thing you do with the mouse, of course, is you click one of the buttons. You click it down. So, uh, so we call that mouse down. That's just, uh, when you do a mouse down, it means you're clicking the mouse down. Either button. We can just distinguish between the buttons, actually, but we, I don't do it in this class. I just, either button doesn't make any difference. So basically, when you press the mouse down, it means the, the button's being pressed down. So here's what happens. When a person presses the mouse down at some point right here, that point has a location. It has an X location, and it has a Y location right here. And uh, among the programs that we have, uh, that, I, that I have listed for today, demonstration programs, there are some which just allow you to press the mouse down, and it shows you the location of the mouse when you press it down. Now, the way that works is, the mouse, uh, the mouse actually uh, is in some location, and you could, in your program, you could say, well, when you press the mouse down, it automatically will give you these two pieces of information, and you can say, well, if the mouse is pressed down here, do something, or if it's pressed down someplace else, do something. You can look at the numbers to see what they are, to see where you're located, okay? So, for example, supposing you had something like a simple, uh, some kind of an, a picture over here, for example, and you knew the picture went from this to here. No, that's the width of the picture right here, and this is the height of the picture. You know exactly where this location is. So you really know all the locations inside this, this uh, picture here. If it's bigger than this point in the x direction, and smaller than that point, it's inside the picture. And if it's, it's got to also be uh, small, uh, greater than this point and smaller than that one. In other words, the mouse, if it's any of these places over here within this picture, it's going to be between here and the x direction, between here and the y direction. Then when you click down and you look at that number, you say, oh yeah, that number is inside the picture. Or that number is not inside the picture, it's someplace else. So immediately, by knowing where a mouse is pointed down, by knowing its number, and by knowing the area that wherever it is, if you decide that you want that mouse to, uh, be, uh, to do something, you can actually say, okay, the mouse went down. Is it close to where I, where, is it in the, in the area I want to hit? Okay, in order to do that, Here's the problem. When you press the mouse down, right here, for example, and the picture's over here, the question is, are you close enough? Do, do you, are you going to let that be acceptable to, to say, okay, I, got, I, I hit the picture? Sometimes you don't, like if you've got a small point here and you say mouse down on that point, people are going to miss it by a little bit. They're not going to quite hit the right, the right spot. That always happens. So what you have to do is you have to think of it as you, you say, if they get anywhere in this area here, you accept it as hitting the point. Okay, it's the same with a picture. A picture, you've got a lot of different points that you can hit it at here. And the question is, where, where do you accept it? Now, what I would do is I would say, okay, I accept it like around maybe that area right there. I'd say, that's, I want it within that area. Then, yes, I, if they click down within that circle, then I say, yes, they got the picture. It's just a, a thing. So here's where the problem comes in. The problem comes in is this picture has a location. And this, when you put the mouse down, it has a location also. In other words, the picture is located here, and when the mouse goes down here, and what you need to do is you need to decide how many pixels are there between those two points so you can decide yourself whether that's acceptable or not. Okay? So here's how you do that. You say, okay, uh, when they click the mouse down, you go to your function. And when you go to your function, here's what you do. Uh, you, you, you write something, something like this, distance. This is inside the function now. Distance uh, uh, equals proximity. That's a, that's the exact word. It's a function. Special. It's a special function. It's built in. 
and you say, uh, you put down where the x and y of the mouse are, the mouse are, and then you put down the x and y of the picture. I'll call it x1, comma y1. And what that does for you is, if you put down the position where the mouse hit in pixels, and you put down where the picture is in pixels, what this will do for you is it'll tell you how far it is between those two points. It, it just calculates it for you. And then what you have to do is you have to decide, are you close enough? So, for example, if you said, suppose you said 10 pixels is all I accept. I won't accept any more than that distance. So then you say, well, if the distance that you got, if the distance you got is less than 10 pixels, then you hit it. You, then you do whatever you say that you did hit the picture. You hit the, uh, the point or the picture or whatever it is. So in other words, I'm, I'm just saying 10. You can say any number you want here. And the thing is, you can use any variable, by the way. Distance is not necessary. Any variable you want right here. But that's important. You have to use that word right there, proximity. And what you do is you put down the, the xy of, of the mouse and the xy where the picture is located. And you know that because when you put the picture down, you have a left, which tells you what the x is, and a top, which tells you where the y is. So you know where that picture is located. So the thing is that uh, that allows you, when you mouse down, to find, find the thing. Now, this right here is not built into JavaScript. You have to actually add a, add a header in the uh, an include file in, there in order to get that, okay? But that include file also includes all the mouse commands, everything we need to make the mouse work for us. But essentially, what I wanted to do first of all, is I just wanted to show you that that right there is, is important because if you don't know where your mouse is with respect to what you're trying to hit, you can't do anything. So the first thing you have to do is figure out how far away is this thing, and then you have to decide, am I close enough? You, you're the programmer, so you decide that. But here's, here's what you have. If you have. First of all, I'm going to write a little program, and it's just simply going to say, if I mouse down close enough, print out close enough or something. It's just going to say to the user, okay, you're close enough. It's not going to do anything. It's just going to say the mouse is close enough. So what you have is uh, HTML. I'll, I'll go through the whole program as we write it. This is the head, like so. Now, um, the first thing is you're going to have this script in here. same one I, I do so many of these I want to be sure I do the same one as I did for you before. Yeah. Yeah, I did do that. Okay. So I want to be sure I put the JavaScript stuff in there. Basic is the name of the thing that you want. Basic, basic contains the function proximity. So once you put that in there, you can then say proximity and it will work for you because it's in, that, it's in that include file. And you also can use all the mouse commands, which I haven't done yet, but basically that's what you, that's what you get. Notice this thing here contains everything you need to push the mouse down and see where it is. Okay? So, so now what you have is, uh, once you put this line in right here, then you can write a JavaScript fu function if you want. I'll say... Uh, script language JavaScript this is regular stuff and then right here you start writing your function okay so here's what I do I say function if you press the mouse down press the mouse down, there's a function up here that says, oh, you press the mouse down, and it jumps to that function right away. No, if you press the mouse down, this thing has built in a, a command that would just, it's just like one of the ones we used before. It'll jump right straight to a function that's got a specific name, and the name of the function is this. 
cross down. What that is, what that does is, uh, when you have mouse down, uh, this function of mouse down, when you have this thing right here, this contains, uh, it, it immediately captures what, what happens to the mouse, just like the sound one we had. When you start talking, it immediately listens to you. When you have this thing right here, it immediately listens to the mouse, and whatever you do with the mouse, it listens to it. And then what it does is, when, it, when you do something with the mouse, it jumps to this function. And when you put the mouse down, you click it down, it jumps to this function right here, right away. And immediately, immediately when you get it, um, you are given the location of the mouse at that point. I'm going I'm to rewrite all this stuff. Here's what you get. When you do mouse down, it comes in and it gives you this variable that says mouse underscore x1. It gives you that variable and that contains the x position of the mouse immediately. And what you do immediately is you put it into one of your own variables. Just create a variable, <coughs> my x or something like that. I'm just calling this my x. It's a variable, my x. <coughs> uh, let me spread this apart so you can see that it's not touching there. So what happens is, as soon as you click the mouse down, it jumps to here, and right away this variable is available to you and tells you where the mouse was clicked down in the x direction immediately. And then it also tells you where where the mouse was clicked in the y direction. That's called y1. Like y1 and x1. Let's just call that my, my y, for example. That's a variable. So what you do immediately is when you come down, is you immediately say, okay, this is where the mouse hit x, and I'm going to put it into my own variable. And this is where it hit in the y direction, I'm going to put that in my own variable. These two guys here, and this thing, and that thing, are all connected together. This says put the function in. This is the function itself that comes to when you click down, and this is the variables it sends to you. When you come into here, these two guys are immediately available, whereas the mouse is right here in this location. And then what happens is, now you have to make your decision. Supposing you know your picture, just, let's just say your picture is at uh, a 100, uh, 200. Supposing that's the location, so 100 in the x direction, and 200 in the, supposing that's, the, you, you put it there, uh, you said left, left 100, uh, top 200. So you, you, you located the picture there. So now the question is you want to know if your mouse is within say 10 pixels of that. You say if it's within 10 pixels when they click down you're going to say I got it. If it's not within 10 pixels of that point then they don't got it. So here's what happens. You say well uh, the distance uh, variable, let's call it D, you can call it anything you want, equals uh, proximity Of where the mouse is located, myx, comma, myy, which just simply says this is the x and y direction, the uh, positions of the mouse. And then your picture has, you already, you already said it was at 100, comma, 200. There it is, just like so. Uh, I wouldn't do it that way. You can do it that way if you want, but uh, I would. Uh, I would, I would say uh, have, have a variable that says where the top of the mouse is, uh, uh, where the top of the picture is to so say, you have a variable up above, you create a variable and, and you say pick, uh, let's see, uh, pick location uh, x equals uh, 100 and variable pick location, I'm just making up this, uh, y equals 200. No, you, you could put that right in, right in here someplace, uh, right in here, after script language. All I'm, doing, all I'm simply doing is I'm saying this is where my picture is, that's all. So, that, so we know when the picture is put on the screen, it's in this location, it's locked there. So now this is, your, this is where your picture is, 100, 200. So what you do is, what you put here is you put uh, pick location X, comma, pick location Y. Close it. There it is. So all you're simply doing is saying, how far is it between this x y and this x y? Which means when you press the mouse down, how far is it between here and the actual location of the picture, which is this upper left-hand corner here, as you know. Now, that's the weird part. Pictures are, are funny. If the picture is very, very, very tiny, it doesn't make any difference. You're going to the, the corner, upper corner, and the middle are going to be close to each other. But if it's a big picture, it makes a big difference. 
if I have a very large picture like uh, this big, for example, on the screen, uh, this is going to find the, the distance between this corner and the mouse down right here. It's not going to find the distance between that point and where you click down because the picture is located here, and that's the picture location. That's where it is. It's in that position, okay? So you have to do a little trick here. You have to do a little simple arithmetic idea. It's a very, very simple idea. Supposing this thing here was uh, 500 this way and 500 that way. Supposing it was 500 this way and 500 that way. Well, you can see immediately, if that was, this location right here in X, if you add 250, you go over here. And if you add 250 to Y, you come down to here. So in other words, if you take this point and add 250 to it and add 250 to here, then what you're going to do is be finding the difference, you're going to be finding the distance between the middle of the picture, not the upper left-hand corner anymore, because you're adding 250 to everything, you're saying, how close am I to that point? So what you do is, in this thing right here, what you do is you say, uh, the pick location, we're going to go over this a lot, by the way, this is not, uh, this is not, you say add 250 to it, comma, and pick location Y plus 250. So what I'm adding is, I'm adding 250 to, to the x and the y, simply because I don't want to know the distance between here and here. That would be dumb. It wouldn't help us at all. So I add 250 to this one and add 250 to the y in this one. Then I'm going to find out the distance between here and here, which is exactly what we want. How far am I from the middle of the picture? Okay? Don't forget, the picture is very, very tiny. It's not going to make a lot. It will be, be easy. If the picture is big, then you get a little problem. Now, so, so basically what you're doing is you're finding the distance between where the mouse went down and where the middle of the picture is located. If that distance, if that distance satisfies you, is uh, less than uh, some distance, supposing it's, you want 20 pixels, for example, you want it to be at least 20 pixels or less, so you say 20. So, so if, this, if this distance is less than 20 pixels, it means the distance between here and here is less than 20. It means you're up in here someplace. And that's what you want. You want something less than 20. Then what you do is you, uh, I'm going to print something out on the screen. You say out uh, one dot value equals uh, close enough. All I'm doing is I'm telling the user, this is just a demo program. Yeah. Line. It says IF, open parentheses, D, is that an L? So it's your very last line. Hang on, I got it. Okay, well, uh, this last line right here, that's out one dot value equals close enough. What part of it? What, uh, the, 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 first, uh, pr the, the first thing, like the first D, it, it's not is, the, is it a less than sign? Yeah, it's a less than this sign. This D is less than 20. Okay. Oh, okay. that's a less than. Okay, cool. So I didn't know if like the L yeah. was Yeah, the if statements have, you know, remember it has equals, less than, greater than, and so forth. What this says, D is littler than 20. So that's that's the symbol for the if statement there. Okay. So what, what that does is, uh, yeah, I agree with you, it looks kind of dumb on it. Okay, so uh, now what you've got is, now what you've done is, if, this, if somebody presses the mouse down, it's going to say, well, here the mouse x, y position, put them into here. Then it's going to say, what's the distance between that point that you just pressed down and the middle of the picture? That comes out right here. Then you say, well, if that distance is less than 20, then I say we hit it. So what you do is you simply say close and all that. This is, no, we aren't actually, we aren't actually running a program that uses the mouse. We're just simply saying, test it out. Test this out to see if it works. So then what happens is, uh, that one says close enough. And, uh, then what I do is I can just end this thing right here. And then I have the program. Uh, the, the basic program that says, uh, you know, slash script, uh, slash, eight, slash head, and then body. And then down here I have to put out one. So I have to have an input area. Let, let me write it like right over here because I've got a little more room. I have to write, this This goes right over here, like so, right there. So we have to have uh, input, 
which is the out out one. Oops, whoops, 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 whoops. And uh, type equals text. Text. And it's slash body slash HTML. This is always the same stuff. I, I just repeat all the stuff over and over again. So here, this part right here is what you see. This part of the body, this is what you see in the body. You just see, all you see is one box. That's all you see is just this box. So in other words, there's two, there's two things. That, well, I have to put the picture up there, I suppose. Uh, I, yeah, I have to do one more thing. I have to put the actual picture up here. I didn't do that. I should have done that right here. Okay, I can do that. Let me do it now. So basically what I did was uh, I put down where the answer goes. The answer goes in L1, so it's going to be, let me draw the screen and, and try to straighten that out. So, so we'll have the screen so you'll see what it does. Okay, uh, Okay. so here's what happens. You have this screen, and uh, you have a picture on it, and it's located at... Uh, uh, Someplace here, it's located at uh, 100 left, top 200. What, 100? Left, and then top 200. 200, thank you. So that's that point right there. And the picture is, uh, is 500 by 500. It's a big picture, okay? Then, uh, what you want to do is you want to have a space here where the answer comes out, saying close enough. I've got to have that. And uh, that's all you need, is those two things. So that's all you see is this picture right here, which is 500 by 500, okay? And then this box that says close enough if it comes out. So what I have to do is let me uh, create that right now, right here. I'm going to fix this program because I didn't have it in. So first thing I want to do is I want to put the picture there. So here's what I do. I say, well, what we have is uh, we have an image, and uh, the source of the image is... We'll call it uh, person dot jpg. That's that's the uh, that's the picture, actual picture that's there. And you know it's 500 by 500. But let's do this. Let's say uh, style equals quote uh, width is 500. Uh, left is 100, and top is 200. 200 right there. And I think that gives us what we want. And that goes in the body, correct? What? That goes underneath the body, correct? That, it's in the body, right? Image okay. source is in the body, right? And then um, uh, up on top of the body, you have the close enough in parentheses, and then you close your bracket, and then you have another closed bracket right, right after. Here, right here. Uh, what, th these, are, these are different things here. I think this is a lost down. It doesn't go there. That goes here. That goes here. What, okay, what else? And then after that semicolon, you go down to if, D, then the 20, that right there, that bracket you're pointing at, right there, you have it closed, and then you have another closed one right underneath mm -hmm. it. I have, I have got it closed. This open shut, open shut. Oh, open shut. Oh, okay, I see it now. Yeah. Okay. That, that right in. <laughs> That's all. Yeah. It's, it's an if statement. If statements have parentheses around the, the question. And then okay. braces around the... Oh, I think these things are called braces. Braces? Uh, you got a language right. Brackets, I think, are the square ones. Yeah. Oh, okay. Braces. And braces are like... I always think of braces like a doctor's dentist brace. Mm -hmm. You kind of see the shape of it, you know. So it's like a brace. Anyway... Uh, so this, okay, so what we have so far is I just put the picture up here. So the picture's here now. We've got that there. And uh, now I want to put this thing here, there. And so what I say is uh, uh, input um, ID equals out one type equals text. Text, quote, close. And then you just 
just have the end of the thing slash body. Uh, and I gotta do one more thing, by the way. Slash HTML. That's the end of the program right there. Slash body slash HTML. Right in here, which I didn't do before, I've got to do right here. I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna put some lines in right here. Okay? Two lines. And one's gonna say, pick loc x. Sorry. Don't write that down. No, that's too long. That's too long. Variable. Variable pick location x. Pick loc x equals 100. Because it's the same as this down here. Left is 100. So I'm saying x is 100. Then I'm saying variable pick loc y equals 200. That's just inserted right in here. Okay, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using them down here, pick log x and pick log y, so I gotta know what those numbers are. So basically what I just did is I just looked at here and said, well, x is 100, and I put 100 there, and top is at 200, and put 200 here. Uh, by the way, there, uh, I, should, I should just interject this. There are many ways of writing programs that do the same thing. I mean, it isn't like uh, you get 10 programs, you get 10 different programs. They all do exactly the same thing, but they, there's different ways of putting stuff together. Um, what happens is uh, you, you have to, if you're really, really a good programmer, your program is either one of two things. It's either very clean, so there's only two or three lines that do a lot of stuff, or it's very clear, in which case you may have 50 lines to show you every step of the way so you know how to do it, okay? The, the short ones are called elegant programs. They're good pro like if you took a course in programming, they'd expect you to write elegantly. They'd expect you to write a short program. They wouldn't like long programs that do the same thing. But we don't care in here. This is, all of our programs are relatively short anyways. So I don't want you to worry about that. I'm not even talking about that. I don't even bring it up. But I want you to know that there are many ways of writing the same program. Maybe someday I'll write a program and I'll write four or five ways and I'll show you the different possibilities. There's many ways of doing it. And as I say, different program or different, different way of writing it. But my programs are usually very, very simple. I keep, I keep to a very simple style so that everything is the same. I use the same strategies all the time. So in this case right here, uh, I could find that I could actually get this information into JavaScript if I wanted to. I could capture it some way. But I don't want to do that. It makes it too complicated. So what I simply do is say, well, when I write the program, I make sure this number here and this number here are exactly the same as this number here and this number here. Because that's where the left of it is and that's where the top of it is. So I want those two numbers to be the same. So when I come down to my calculations, these calculations are it's going to be position uh, 100 plus 250, and this is going to be 200 plus 250, which is exactly what you want it to be. So anyway, to make a long story short, this program right here is, I think, operational at this point, unless I've made some, some mistake on writing it somewhere. So after script um, language equals JavaScript? After you, script? Yeah, the third one. You added in something, and it's V-A-R, and then what is it? P-I-C-C. This is language equals JavaScript? Yeah, but you added something underneath it just uh, now. Function equals function mouse down. No. Like oh, this stuff. You mean this stuff? Yes. What is that? P I C C. -O okay, it's it's okay. It's this right here. Pick loc x. And this yes, is pick loc y. C L O C. Yeah. P -I -C -C -L -O -C. I, I just made it up. I, I don't know. I should have said P X and P Y. I should have made a simple variable. For those variables, do you have to say that uh, like variable my x equals a number? Uh, At any time, since aren't those technically scripts right now? Where, where, which, which line are you talking about? Um, just above the function. Above you the are, function up here? Yeah, because no, or in the function, never mind. These you guys? normally say when we do numbers, you involve saying equals a number. Like your variable equals a number, so. It, yeah, do you mean this thing right here? I have variable. I, I'm just saying, I don't know if you did write it. I'm asking if you needed mm -hmm. to. If I can do that? If you would need to write it, because normally you would say what oh, you told wait, us before. You mean like this number, number here? This number, for example? Yeah, like if it, is it going to read it as a script? No, it knows, it knows it's a number, yeah. Okay. Uh, you can put numbers on the right-hand side any place, and, they, and it knows what it is. Okay. That's a good question, because I, I, you know, after doing this so long, I don't even think about stuff like that, but it's true. The, this, this number here is just a number. It doesn't know anything. Okay. But it does know what this is. 
So it just adds that just a number to it. That's all it knows. But you can do that. Uh, you, can, you could, as you say, as I said, there are many ways of writing. I could have said uh, offset equals 250 or something like that. And then I could say pit block plus offset. You could do that. You could, you could do that. And, and some programmers would do that, by the way. But to keep it as simple as possible, having to make a bunch of variables, I just, just threw it there. Okay. I was just making sure we didn't have to say variable my x equals a number. Right, right. You could actually put a number here. I could actually say uh, uh, 250 plus 100. I could say 350 and uh, 4, 450 here, and it would have worked. Okay, but I, I wanted to uh, I wanted to get to the point where you actually know that this right here is a, is a once you write that down in your program, it's sort of a variable. It's located in a variable. That's the, they they are something. I could I actually could get those two numbers up to here without doing this. I could actually bring them up. Because if you think about it, um, well, the, 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 the image, uh, uh, no, I couldn't because I have to have an ID. See, I didn't identify the thing. Ooh, that's a problem. Hang on. Uh, it doesn't make any difference. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, no, it, it's not a problem. So it doesn't make any difference. I should have had an ID in here. If I were going to use take these two numbers and move them up there, rather than just define them separate. I defined them as being the same myself. I just wrote down that this is what that one says, this is what that one says. If I wanted to actually take those two numbers and bring them up to here like this, I would have had to have an ID on this thing. It would have to know where it's getting the numbers. But we haven't, we haven't covered that yet, so I'm not going to worry about it. But there are different ways of doing this stuff. That's what I want to say. There's a lot of ways of doing it. But you can write a number in any place. Numbers, numbers just, it understands what numbers are. Because you put a uh, variable pick location before the function, does that make it a global, or are you trying to make it a global? Uh, this is a global, yes. Okay. Yes. It's a good view. That's cool. <laughs> you got that. That's exactly true. Uh, in this program, it wouldn't have made any difference, but it's still good to know. I would, I would make it a global name, and that's where I like to put stuff like that. Things that Things that are not changed inside the function, I want to leave them, or even change, there are changes inside the function, I want to leave them outside so they'll survive the change as, they, as, as things have changed. Okay. Um, so at this point, if you run this program, let me go through what the program does. Uh, the first thing is you run the program, and you see this on the screen right here. All you do is see that right there. And you take your mouse and you click it down someplace. And wherever you click it down, okay, what it does is it says, it come, comes up the mouse down and it gives you these two locations, which is the location of this mouse. Now I know where the mouse is. And then it says, from that location, how close am I to this point plus 250 plus 250? How close am I to that right there? That's the distance I'm finding right now. This, 250, this plus 